Family, what's up, my family, my friends, my sisters, my brothers, what's up, y'all? Are you up? Are you ready? Are you excited about what God is doing, about what God is doing in your life and in, in the life of this amazing church? If you are, you know how we do. Put some fire in the chat. Let's go. Put some fire in the chat. It's, it's going to be an amazing day. It's going to be an amazing day for so many reasons, and I'm excited. I'm so excited to be on with you guys today. It's Miracle Week. God is getting ready to do what eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, what hasn't even come into the minds and the thoughts of people this week. And I'm so excited to be a part of what God is doing in the earth. And I'm so excited to do it with you, with my family, with my people. It's going to be a great week. Uh, as you put in fire in the chat, you know how we do. I want to know where you're from. Where, you, where, you, where are you tuning in from today? I saw yesterday, Pastor didn't say it, but I saw somebody going from Mexico. Mexico was like, they were dropping the Mexican flags in there. Are you, are you on it today, Mexico? I saw you. I saw you yesterday. You kept putting the flags in the chat. So I hope you're on today. Drop where you're watching from. We're grateful that you got up early in the morning. It's not really that early, but early this morning to come on and get your faith stirred up this week because God is getting ready to do something amazing at Change Church. And I'm so excited and grateful to be a part of it. Man, um, today is special. We have a guest that's getting ready to jump on with us that I, I'm a fan. I, I, I love her with my whole heart. She's such an incredible person. But I think today, I, I want to start with this. So many believers, um, live their life from the posture of what God can do for them, right? It's like, Lord, I need you to do this for me. I need you to open this door. I need you to uh, make this way. I need you to heal this for me. Instead of the posture of God, what can I do for you? What what can I do? It's, it's, called, it's almost like consumer Christianity. It's like, God, I need you to do this, 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 this. Thank you. Instead of, Lord, what can I do? I, I think it's um, Psalms 116. It's like, Yo, what shall I render? Like, like I think it's the scripture, yeah, it says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits? God, what can I do for you? And this week, we have an amazing opportunity to say, Lord, I know what I can do for you this week. I can help my incredible church do something that is going to be a blessing to people all over the world, to be a blessing to people in Atlanta, to be a blessing to people in New Jersey, to be a blessing to people who come to our campuses. What are we doing this week? Well, let me tell you what we're doing. We are trying, we're not trying, we are about to secure an amazing campus in Atlanta. That's what we're doing. We're getting ready to secure a campus. We're also getting ready to upgrade some things in our campuses um, to be able to provide a better experience for people who come. And we're getting ready to pay off a building. Yes, we're getting ready to do all three of these through this amazing miracle offering this weekend. And I just believe, I'm crazy enough to believe that if God has done what he's done already in the past, that he has got enough to do it again. And I'm like, yo, Lord, I want to be a part of that. I want in. I want in. If this is what you're doing in the earth, I want to be a part of that. And so now I'm like, God, look, I know I need you to do some things for me. Yes, I have needs. We all have needs. We all need God to come through in certain areas of our life. But this week, what can I do? What, what can I do? I want to be a miracle. As a matter of fact, I need somebody to drop that in the chat. Somebody put in the chat, make me a miracle. Make me a miracle. I know you need one, but God, make me one. <laughs> I know you have some needs, but God, make me a miracle. I, I know you're facing some obstacles and you're like, God, is, we're down to the end of the year. I thought some things would have popped off by now. I thought some things would have come through for me by now. But you know what? I'm putting that to the side for a second. And I'm saying, God, make me somebody's miracle today. Make me somebody's miracle this week. I just don't want to need a blessing. I want to be a blessing. I present my body as a living sacrifice. I am yours. Use me. Make me a miracle. And I just believe that as we make it happen for somebody else, that God is going to make it happen for us. And so I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited about this week. But listen, my friend is here. My sister is here. One of the greatest worship leaders on planet Earth. 
one of the greatest singers on planet Earth, one of the funniest people on planet Earth is here. Can we make some noise? Drop some fire one more time in the chat for my sister, Naomi. Rain is in the beauty. <laughs> Let's go. Hi. <laughs> Todd, you really, you know, you really did did nice in front of the people. You got to match my any. I'm hot. That, first of all, I'm I'm in a hotel and I'm probably about to get kicked out uh, <laughs> because I'm loud. It's early, but but yo, I'm so grateful. Number one, thank you on behalf of our pastors. Thank you, thank you for saying yes and for jumping on. I know you're busy. I know you have a lot going on. Well, not at eight a.m. I was a lot. The lot that I usually have going on is sleep. But I, <laughs> anything for you, anything. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm so grateful. We we just got off tour together, and yeah. I watched you every single night. I watched the Lord do something through you every single night that I just sat back. And it's like it's cool because I leave every single week, right? And so it's cool to sit back sometimes and just watch somebody be great at what God has called them to do. Mm -hmm. And it was just an honor and a privilege to watch you every night lead people into God's presence. And I'm just... So grateful to have you on. So grateful to have you help us stir the faith of the of our change family because yes. God is getting ready to do something crazy. And I know God yes. has done some amazing things in your life. I know we've talked about some of them. <laughs> Just a few. Just a few. We've talked Just about some of them. So I want to ask you, I want to start right here. What, are, what do you believe are some practical ways, right? As we go into this week, you have people who have real needs, right? They have real needs. And they're like, yo, y'all, it's Christmas. Uh, <laughs> I need a miracle. We talk about the church needs a miracle. Like, what are some practical ways that you believe people can help, you know, that can help stir their faith up in this season right now? So some practical ways. Um, I mean, my mind goes to, I think most people go during this season, like, let me watch a Hallmark Christmas movie. Um, <laughs> and that's cute. And I think the Lord could use it. But I think, you know, searching out testimonies, listening to sermons, going to church, being in the community of people, um, of believers, right? I think are practical ways because I think that the Lord really stirs and builds our faith through community. But there might be some people that aren't, that you don't have community around you and that's not as easy. Um, and so I would say, read your scriptures, listen to mm -hmm. music, pray, talk to God, have a conversation. And I always tell people, because let's be honest, I think there's a lot of um, prayerlessness and that prayerlessness leads to guilt and shame about it. And so then we don't mm -hmm. want to talk to the only person that can make it better, which is God. You know, it's like you actually have to talk to God in order to get breakthrough and stuff. But if you're ashamed because you don't pray, then you won't pray. Mm -hmm. Then you start praying. You know what right. I mean? So I always just say like, hey, start a conversation. Ask the Holy Spirit, hey, if you want to speak to me. I'm open and I'm ready and I'm willing. And so it's it's literally just talking to God or having a conversation with a person that you know um, maybe has a relationship with the Lord and say, hey, I'm struggling. It's admitting. Now, I'm saying this stuff like it's easy, but it's not always easy. Um, right. I'm hoping that in this culture, we have more of a, you know, it is what it is uh, mentality. So hopefully people would just feel comfortable to say, hey, I'm struggling. I need encouragement. I need to know that God is going to do it. And yeah. what I find is that usually when we when we set out a need, right, he's the God that answers. When we when we begin to ask for what we need, we begin to find answers. And so. Yeah, yeah, that's strong. That's strong. And 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 just to piggyback off that, I'm, I think I think a very practical way is to not lose your memory. Because Hello. people. People will, I don't know how we do this, and I've, I've been I've been guilty that we can so easily forget about what God has already done. Already done. You know what I mean? And it's like the enemy tries to overwhelm our now, right? He tries to bring all of this stuff in our life and these issues and these problems and what's happening in the world and just life be life and <laughs> all of this stuff is happening. And so you're overwhelmed by what's happening in your life now that he tries to make you forget about what God has already done. Psalms 103, bless the Lord on my soul and forget not all of his benefits. Like, it's like, yo, don't forget. Like, I know it's it's hot right now. I, I know it's, it's fiery furnace hot in your life right now, but don't allow the heat of this moment to make you forget the things that God has already done. Because if we look back over our life, like for me, I can start thinking like, yo, 
I can, I remember then not believing he could do it. If I'm not, I remember then right. believing that there's no way he's going to come through for me. And if he got me out of that, and that was a mess. Right. <laughs> if he got me out of that, if he healed that, then why is it so difficult to believe that he's not going to come through for me again? So, so for my family, for my changed family, let's let's start here. Keep your memory in this season. Don't don't forget. Don't somebody put in the chat. Don't forget. Don't forget. Never forget what God has already done. Because Todd Chibbett said it the best. If he did it before, he'll do he'll it do again. It. The same God right now. Wait, same God back then. Well, let me hop in because you you got me stirred up. Like this is the stuff that stirs me, right? So this is why I said, like, listen to music and listen to songs, because what it does is it triggers your memory. It causes mm. you, and not just a new song, right? Listen to the old song. Listen to the song that you sang when you were going through the things, because the way our brains are wired, and I'm just talking about humans, we right. are wired to take in the what's going on around us at this very moment. And we see it. God has to command the children of Israel to remember. He tells them to build an altar, put these rocks over here, uh, yeah. write this down because you will forget. Jesus is doing miracles, performing miracles. He just fed um, the 5,000. And then the disciples are like, well, what are we going to eat in the boat? Are y'all okay? I just <laughs> fed 5,000 with a little boy's lunch. We so quickly forget this is something that's natural. You can literally be walking with Jesus himself and yeah. think, and this is why I believe the Lord said for us to pray, right? Give us this day our daily bread. I think our mindsets are on the daily. We don't always think about what he did before. We're just in the present moment. And so there has to be um, that practical thing that helps to anchor you to your yep. memory. And this is why it's a command to remember. It is a yes. command to remember. I want to, yes. real quick, Jesus, the thing that he tells us to do, right? He said, take communion. Why? Do this in remembrance of remember. me. And so the reason that we do it is so that we don't forget because Christians forget the sacrifice of the of Jesus Christ. The yeah. actual thing that brought them into the faith, why they're going to church every Sunday. We can quickly forget what Christ did to get us there. And every time we mess up and sin and 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 fall apart, we go, oh no, what am I going to do? Oh no, 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 no. There's, there's already been a way, a, a way made. And this is why we need to take communion. So we remember that he's done it. We quickly forget. And so I just want to encourage the people that go, well, man, I never remember nothing. It's like, remember, like <laughs> you're going to forget, but remember, like do it, do your work to try to remember, write it down, Amen. put yeah. a post it up, do something. Yeah. And for most of us, it don't take much. It's like, yo, yo, God has been faithful and God continues to be faithful. Right. God continues to be good. Good isn't what he does. Good is who he is. Mm -hmm. He is a good God and he has been faithful and faithful mm -hmm. he will be. So don't forget, okay? That's a very practical way. As we go into this weekend and as we make decisions about God, you know, what should I sow? What should I give? It's like, yo, don't forget, I'm, I, it's easy to let this go when I've seen you come through when I had nothing. Right. It's easy to let this go when I knew I when I knew what I wasted stuff on. What I knew, what, what I remember, how I blew money on certain things. And I'm like, now I get to be a part of a miracle? Yeah, you, I, I can't be God-giving. So it's easy to release something when I know the only reason why I have it is because of him. Mm -hmm. The only reason I have it is because. Okay, man, that's good. I want to keep moving because we... I, no, I feel the flow. You stir me up. I'm yeah, waking yeah, up. Yeah. The, I'm waking up the preacher. Okay. Here it is. This is this is this is an easy one because we do what we do, right? This is who we are. So, what is a song? What's a song? A song, maybe a song that you've written, a song that you're listening to that just helps to stir your faith in this season of your life. Okay, right now I have three because you know that's how it is, right? They do. They they hit different parts of my face, right? right? <laughs> right. Um, so to be honest, one of the songs that I'm listening to right now is "He Won't Fail." That's your song. Um, <sighs> yeah. And I didn't. I didn't even want to say it because I'm like, they're gonna be like, she over here talking because she's talking to. No, <laughs> literally, that's the song that's been on repeat for me. Um, and you know, one of the reasons that I love it is because 
the chorus is he won't fail, he won't fail, he won't leave you. No, he won't fail. It's repetitive. You can't get lost in a bunch of words about, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I gotta uh just go ask Daniel. I got a lot of words going on in some of my songs, but he won't fail has been something that I've been taking with me because I think it's just the simple truth that God is God and he will he cannot fail and so i'm holding on to his word like this yep. is what i do i'm like god if you said something to me and i know it's you and i will gideon and fleece god in a minute you know how gideon put he was like all right god if the fleece is dropping the grass is wet, then i know it's you and then the next Lord, time, if this well, is you if i want to wake up on the floor i want to wake up on the floor this all right. morning and i know I, it's you. i need to know that this, this is you because right. people be talking and the enemy be talking and my mom be talking. I need to know that it's you, right? And so I've done that. And so when the Lord says something to me, I'm standing on his word. That song carries me through. There's another song, um, Defender. Um, you go before I know. It's just it's just about God mm. being with you and standing for you. Um, there's a lot of different things that I've walked through and to have to be bold and stand up in certain moments and say what the Lord is saying. I'm remembering that he's my defender. And I think there's an uh, one of my other songs that I wrote a story I'll tell. And it's literally, that's the song that helps me remember. Go remember listen to that song today, people. <laughs> that song, get out of here. That song think, is strong. The story I tell by Naomi Ray on her latest album, not her Christmas album. She has a Christmas album that just dropped as well. So download that one, download the Christmas record, and then download her previous record that just came out right before that. There's a song called, There's a Story I Tell that's Oh, life giving. Okay, there it is. I plugged it. Just cash at me on the back end. Of Thank strike. you. I'm going to cash up you. <laughs> Two dollars. No, let me stop. <laughs> no, it's like you have to. I, the reason why I love that song is we wrote it from the perspective of right now, I'm going to tell a story. You know how usually we got, like, we just go, I got a story because of what I said. No, right now, while it sucks, I'm sorry, am I allowed to say that in church? Yeah, sucks is okay. Right now, while it sucks, while it's bad, while it doesn't look like I'm going to make it, I know that I'm gonna have a story to tell in the future because I know my God. It's that same thing that the, the, the three Hebrews, okay, even if he doesn't deliver us, even if he doesn't, like I know God is gonna deliver, but even if he doesn't, it's that type of faith and I wanna live by that. And I think singing that song and remembering it helps me live it out. It's something that it just puts it in my soul. I gotta be able to sing that and say that. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think we always believe that, but I think by saying it and rehearsing it, you know, it's like, all right, God, you're going to do this. I'm going to have a uh, testimony. I'm going oh to have one. <laughs> and I'll testify of the battles you won. I can't take that song. <laughs> I know the song. You don't think I know the song? I know the song. I know the song. Don't play me. I, I listen. That song is so strong. Story I tell. Listen to that. Oh, my God. That's so strong. I'm not telling you this from my past. I'm telling you this in the middle of the fiery furnace. I'm going to have a test. I'm going to have I'm a get... It's him getting that shout. No, because we need that type of faith. We that need that type faith. of Yes, that's faith. Like that type of audacious faith that says, I'm not going to wait until I see it. I know that I can shout now. I've already heard stories. Listen, I don't need another story. I've been through it. I've walked through it. I know that God is faithful. I know he's literally not going to, what is it? Um, He didn't bring you this far to leave you. It's, it's that uh, Mary, Mary, Uh, I don't, well, it's the old song. I don't feel no way. I was about to say, no, yeah, but, that's, it goes way back further than Mary, Mary. Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> But I'm a Mary Mary fan. Go by that. I record. don't believe you know? he's brought me this far to leave me now. He wouldn't leave me. That's not the God that we serve. And I feel like we need to, and I know I'm like still answering the other question, but I feel like we need to remind ourselves of who God is, who he is. This is who he is. He's not shady. He's not shisty. He keeps his word and he is about him and God will back his name. He's going to uphold his reputation. It's not about you. It's not about your name. It's not about your, your family, your line. This is about God. And if he said something, he's going to back it because he said it. Oh, uh, and that's why it's so important to keep his word out there. That's it. Not your perspective. Not what your mama said, yeah. not what you think God said. That's why it's so important because he is going to stand behind his word. He is not obligated to stand behind what you say. Okay. He is yeah. not obligated to stand behind your idea of who right. he is. He is obligated to his word. It. It's his word that he won't go back on. Not your opinion. All right. All right. All right. Not your religious rhetoric right. that you heard 
from your cousin. He is only obligated to his worth. That's what's not coming back void. Anything other than that, you're taking a risk, sweetheart. Right. You live in a risky life. I'm going to put his word out there. I'm going to not. This is what you said about me. You called me the head and not the tail. You said I was above and not beneath. You said I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I'm blessed when I go. So you said that. And as long as you put his word out there, that will help your faith. Your faith. The problem is you've been saying everything else. You've been on IG. We've been on IG. We've been watching what everybody else is saying. We've been yep. saying stuff on phones and in back rooms. And God is like, no, no, no. Mm. Cut the chatter and say what I say. That's it. Say what I say. Uh -huh. Right. But that takes <laughs> maturity. That takes maturity and it takes waiting and it takes patience and it takes like waiting on the Lord and hearing what he's saying. Yeah. It, it, takes, it takes being a believer. Yeah. It, t it takes being a believer. And we, we're, again, we're so consumed by everything else. And it's like, sometimes you're like, yo, I'm, I'm, a, I'm saved. I'm, <laughs> you gotta I'm remember, I'm a I, child of God. Wait, I hold don't on. live by right. this other standard out here. Like, like, I know we've moved the line so much. I'm not getting into any of that, but it's like, yo, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I've been, I've been purchased. I've been like Jesus died. For that. Okay, okay, we gotta. It's, it's, uh, I got nine minutes. Here, but, we gonna stay here. on here for seventeen more minutes? No, just kidding. <laughs> but watch this. Watch this. Uh, there's a song we're actually doing this weekend. We're doing this weekend on Miracle Sunday at Change Church, um, and it's called. Um, oh my God, what is it? It's called. Uh, he always provides. I'm giving you guys. Put that in your phone. I want y'all to already know it when we get there Sunday, so we can just cry. And let together. our faith rise together. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Everybody download this. It's about one house worship. Um, and I, I, I was telling you before we started, I said, it's amazing how you can listen to a song and it takes you to a specific season of your life. Yeah. And it's 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 weird to me because I have so many stories of how God has come through for me and my family. I have so many stories. And when I heard this song last week, I've heard bits of this song, but I finally listened to the entire song uh, a few days ago. And I was just crying. And it took me to this one place. It took me It took me to this place. I remember I, lo I had lost my job. I lost my job. And we were getting ready to move to Greenville. And I was like, Lord, and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget Cause I'm like, yeah, I don't know where, you know, money was weird. And me and my, who I can't even, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> I remember me and my wife, we drove from North Carolina to Greenville and we we packed a lunch. Like we made sandwiches and got some yogurt and a little bag of chips because we didn't want to spend money when we got to Greenville. <sighs> wait, Todd, no. No, Todd, do it. Remember, hmm, I remember sitting in that parking lot because my wife was trying to find a job which we were just like, but we we went, we were so optimistic. We sat in that parking lot and we ate a sandwich and some yogurt because couldn't you didn't even want to go to Burger King to spend money. Like we sat in that parking lot, not knowing how God was gonna come through. And I sat back and I look at how faithful man. Like, like I remember, I don't know, it's like he always provides. Like, I know what David was like, yo, I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous. Like I said, I remember being in that parking lot, not knowing how God was going to do it. Like, it was like, you know, you in the trenches when you can't even figure out a way to get out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when you can't even like conjure up, a, okay, well, if God would just do that. And if God, if this would happen, if this person hit me, that like I was in that thing, and I'm like, I don't know how God is going to do this. And I sat and listened to that song. It says, all I have needed. <laughs> oh, the hell, you did it. And that people wonder why, like, why you go so hard? Because God. Yeah. God did it, man. Everything I can point back to everything that has happened good to me in my life and say, God is getting it. The reason, either I'm I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm not, I'm not trying to push an offering or anything on this weekend. I was literally going through this, you know, going into this weekend. I got some things that for my family is a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, man, I really want to, I really want to so big. And I was like, yo, I was debating with God about, you know, what I'm going to give this weekend. And I started thinking like, yo, he 
always provides. Always. Always. All capital A heavy on the ways. That <laughs> He always, I know it's an L in there. I hear y'all. Uh, he always, he always provides. And I look at what God is. That's why I said, you got to keep your memory. It's like, man, I remember sitting in that parking lot, man. I remember eating those Cheez-Its. Yeah. <laughs> I remember eating that Greek yogurt and eating a sandwich in the parking lot. Not knowing how God was going to come through. And I look at what God has done. I look at what God has done and I, and, uh, go ahead. I want to jump in. So no. as you're talking about this, I was thinking about a time when um, my house was in foreclosure. We, um, we, my husband got um, injured. And so he was off from work and not getting the same, like he has unlimited sick days, but you know, the salary is cut because basically you're not right. actually working. And so we got behind on our mortgage and you know the people want their money so we ended up in foreclosure and i mean to make a completely long story short ended up talking about because you know when you say we we decided to go to um modify the 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 mortgage yeah. and um because we realized like hey it's it's really a lot we need to modify it and so then when you modify it you have to you can't pay it on yep. top of that. So it's like, because if you're saying you can't pay it, then how, how are you paying it? It was a whole big thing we got into with the banks, but it ended up being two years, two years that we went without paying our mortgage. And so we had have, we have saved up a bunch of money, but you know, hello, just disrespectful and irresponsible. We started doing stuff with some of the money because you know, you're holding it, but you don't have as much anyway. And right. I'm saying this for a reason because some people feel like because I was irresponsible, that's why I'm in the situation I'm in, right? So the Lord, um, well, this one, the Lord right, right here, but the bank ended up coming back and was saying, let's say that you owe X amount of dollars. We did not have X amount of dollars. It was not good. And we began to pray. We just started to really, really, really pray because we realized like they're about to actually foreclose on our house. They about to come get us and get us out of there. And so I started praying. I remember I went into my closet, my prayer closet, and I said, <laughs> I was like, God, because it was the promise, the Lord promised us the house and that it would be a place that people would come. They would find refuge. They would find him um, and they would find rest and peace. And so I said, God, this is your house. This is your mortgage. You got to pay it. I don't know. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm like, listen, God, you know what we got. I'm like, we willing to put whatever we got to it, but you got to pay it. My grandmother calls me in like two days later. And she said, hey, um, I hear that y'all struggling with the house. Do y'all need money? I'm like, yeah, grandma, we need money. Now, mind you, I don't want to ask my grandma for money. My grandma got money, but I don't want to. That's pride, right? I don't want to ask grandma for the money. My grandmother says to me, well, there are some savings bonds that I got you when you were born. I said, really, Grandma? Like, if this could help. She said, yeah, I want you to come over. My grandmother bought me, had to be 54 savings bonds, multiple amounts. Most of them had matured. Some of them had not yet. When I went to the bank and figured out what those savings bonds were worth, it was probably $20 over what we owed. <laughs> When I tell you, the Lord had made a way. I'm going to tell you when he made a way. He made a way 30-something years before we would even get into the situation. Naomi, God don't knew stop exactly. playing with me. No, this is what I'm trying to say. There were moments when I was 18 and I was going to go away to college and I wanted to cash those bonds. And my grandmother said, no. She said, no, you can't do it. And, then I, and I had forgotten about them. I had forgotten about the savings bonds because my grandmother was basically like, you not cashing them. This is my money. Anyway, we go. that's another story for another time. <laughs> But when I got into that moment and needed that money, it was there. And God had made a way 30 plus years before. I want to encourage somebody that there's a way that's already been made. There's a Come way on. that's already been made. We were able to pay our mortgage, get out of foreclosure, and continue to pay it. By that time, my husband was back to work. God was faithful. And I'm going to tell you, it was hard. We didn't know how we were going to get out of that. We did not have the money. I was singing already and doing my little uh, thing on the side and traveling here and there. But it wasn't enough. It was not enough. We were a one-income household. But God was doing it. Jeez. That's all I got to say. The way... 
here it is. We're at the end. We got to go. Our time is up. We got to clear the parking lot. We got a 1230 service. Here it is. <laughs> the way was already made. Already. Change family. As we go into this weekend, as you are praying about, hey, God, I want to be a miracle. Make me a miracle. I want you to pray and believe with such a peace in the fact that all that you need, his hand has already provided. Already. It's already done. It's, it's already done. As you, you should give this weekend with so much confidence that God has already provided everything you need. Everything. And as you saw, as we go into this weekend, because we get ready to see a miracle, change is already a miracle. We, <laughs> Pastor Darius says it all the time, like, yo, I didn't, we didn't raise money and start a church. We started the church <laughs> without raising money. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's crazy faith. He has crazy faith. And look at what God has done at every campus in Atlanta, globally, through through Change Mart, through through, oh my God, just everything that God is doing through this amazing church. And now we get to be a part that I just believe that the testimonies that are going to come through as you make it happen for God's house, God is going, not God is going, God has already, already. put things in place to make it happen for you and your family. Naomi, can you pray for us? Or you, you're not going to tell that kind of story and, we, and you not pray for my family, my peoples, my brothers, my sisters yes. who are on right now, our whole global family. Um, can you just pray a prayer to just kind of encourage and just, I believe faith has has, has risen today. I believe that yeah. there are people right now that have started to already make decisions um, yeah. already because of what they've had an opportunity to hear today. So can you pray for us? Yeah. Um, Father, we thank you. I thank you, God, even for this, uh, this, opportunity to come and be live for this miracle week. I ask Holy Spirit that you would speak to uh, the hearts of my brothers and sisters at Change Church. I thank you, Lord, for the goals. I thank you, God, for the vision that was set before them, at, uh, for the, before the man of God and that, th that they've decided to take on and run with. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you don't just meet corporate needs, you meet individual needs. And so I ask Holy Spirit that this would be a time that they would see you as Jira. They would see you as provider, the one that provides and comes even in the nick of time. I thank you, Lord, that you are the God who does miracles, that you display your power among the people. That's who you are and that's what you do. And so I pray, God, that they would see your power displayed, God, not just in the corporate setting, but in their personal lives. I thank you, Lord, for those that are tithers. I thank you, God, for those that are givers, that those that are generous. Generous. I pray, God, that there would be a spirit of generosity that would flow through the house. I pray, God, that it would not be relegated to a season, to Christmas, and to that thing, but it would be relegated to your house and your kingdom and the work that you want to do. I pray, God, that every seed that is sown, God, it would be a seed that would reap a harvest that would push back the darkness in yeah. the regions, in Atlanta, in New Jersey, all over, God, on every campus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that they would see direct fruit, not just fruit that impacts them. I pray, God, that there would be a selflessness, a spirit of yes. selflessness and generosity that permeates throughout this whole community. I thank you, God, for those that are struggling. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for those that are struggling, even as that widow gave her last coin, God, that she was the one that, that you were impressed with. I pray, God, for those yeah. that decide yeah. to give their last and decide to pour into you. I pray, God, that they would feel how impressed you are with them. I thank you, God, that you would begin to give them back even for what they've given. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that does all things well. You watch over your word to perform it. And so we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. God, would you allow faith to rise in their heart in their hearts? Allow faith to rise in their houses. Allow faith to rise in their families, God. I yeah. come against all family dissension. I pray, God, that they would be on the same page, that husbands and wives would be on the same page yeah. about what they choose and decide to give. I come against anything that would try to be divisive in Jesus' name, Lord. I yes. pray that there will be unity in the house in Jesus' name. And God, we can't wait to see what you're going to do, what you're going to do through these people for your kingdom and for your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, my God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Listen, if you're on and you're like, yo, I, I, I didn't put in my prayer request. I think there's a, a, a link in the chat. I think they've put it in there. If they're not, 
If it hasn't been put in there, I think they're going to drop it in there now. If you want to click that link and go in and put your prayer request in as we pastor is going to pray Sunday over every prayer request, over every um, petition that we put before or that you put before the Lord, that we put before the Lord. And we just believe God is a man of his word yes. and he is going to come through and we're going to see miracles Million little miracles. One, <laughs> two, three, four. I can't even count them all. Count them Naomi, all. I love you. Change I love family, you. I love you. This Sunday, get to the building. If you got to come on a horse, I would <laughs> I I would have to be in a row. If I had to sit in the parking lot, I would get to the building. This weekend is gonna be special. Pastor Darius is gonna be there with an amazing word. Um, it's gonna be special. I love y'all. Thank y'all. It's miracle week, baby. Let's go. See y'all this weekend. Thank you, Nate. I love you. Love you. Bye. Peace.